Hi there, I'm Russell Saunders from Let's Get Racing and I've been joined by a very special guest. I'm joined by Dougie Costello. Dougie, can you tell us a little bit about your job please and how it relates to Let's Get Racing? Hi Russell, yeah. Um, yeah, well, I, well as you know, you first met, um, uh, what, met me a couple of years ago um, and we, we got you into horses and you got uh, with the bug for it. Um, and my side of it is I'm a, a professional uh, jockey, flat jockey. I was a ex jump jockey. So um so yeah, so so I've been a flat jockey for the last five years. Um so yeah. And what would you say uh, was your favourite horse, Dougie? Oh, that's a hard question. Um it's a very hard question to to answer that because every horse is a very a uh, special part because I've been a professional jockey now probably tw 20 years um, and you always think of the horses that got you started it might only be a handicap of Sedgefield um, or a big Ascot winner like uh, with quite reflection the good ones always seem to come along at the right time whether it's a class 5 class 6 and the one thing as a rider for, for actually me, uh, what I find, you can win a seller at, at, at a Wolverhampton and you'll still get that same buzz as you will with a Royal Ascot winner. But the beauty of the Royal Ascot winner is the prize money is a lot better. Uh, <laughs> and it keeps you in, in stock for a longer time. Um, but it is, it's, it's the whole art. It's being a jockey is, is for me again, but every jockey has a different view of it. Um, but for me, I'm a, with like a horse lover. Um, and the side I like is getting into horses' minds um, because they all have it's trying to get them to, to run faster and for a jockey is to find that key um, it's quite hard with class 5 and class 6 horses because you can come back one day and think I found the key and then the next day you get drawn 12 and you're stuck out at Wolverhampton over 5 furlongs and the chances are not very, very, very good. You could get boxed in, but in the bigger class fours, threes, downwards, races are normally rent suit, you know, especially when you go into your, your group races. Um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's all rent suit, you know. Um, but it's still the enjoyment as a rider to find the key to a, a low-grade horse or a good horse, you know. That, that is the enjoy, enjoyment fraction of me. Sure. And so for some of our owners who wouldn't necessarily be familiar with horses or horse racing what are some of those keys that you're talking about um well uh if you imagine a horse is a ton animal there's no possible way an eight stone person five foot three or, or some like me five foot ten nine stone and probably a stone underweight can actually physically pick up a horse and make it run as fast as it can so it's a bit of mind uh, it, it, it's trying to get in towards the mind and the only way you have that is through touch and feel with your hands and your legs and your voice um, that's where you, if you're ever beside a racetrack if, if any of your owners ever been to a racetrack or has watched it on t TV um, if you get a camera up close towards the last hurdle you might hear a few shouts and screams and yelps off jockeys and and, and that's what they're trying to do. Um, and trying to get a horse to run faster for me is 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 a bit like you, you can't pull a horse to water and make a drink. So the so, key is to, if you can get that contact with a bit in their mouth and, and keep that nice, comfortable contact through through your reins and get them to take a hold of the bit and squeeze with your legs and get them to run through through the bridle. Uh, it's a bit like driving a car, first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, and work your way through. Um, like we've had this issue about, I suppose I shouldn't be saying it, but, but, but everybody knows this side of the sport that they go on about the whip, uh, the, um, the habit called in America, the, um, what's a new, new word, the percussion uh, stick, um, the persuaders called, called in America, actually. Um, we, we've had this, and there, it, like, you, if you did stand down at the last furlong mark, you would hear loud bangs and, and clatters and, uh, from the whip. But these are all trying to I would imitate what horses do do in the wild. Um, as a jockey, if you hit a horse too hard uh, on the rear of the saddle on the rump, they will not run faster. They'll curl up and they'll go slower. Okay. So for a jockey, it's a very fine art 
to 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 connect right and what the sport has done is made the whip a, a, a very soft um but a, a, a very soft i would pad it's uh, uh a whip that um makes a loud bang uh and it is for people that is not used to horse ra- uh, racing you know if you stepped down at the last and you heard the bangs you're like wow that's a bit but it's actually if you didn't hear a bang, then that's when it would be a bit more, you know, that would, when you would really want to take, it would take north. So it's all about the noise and the contact and, and so on, trying to get, in, uh, with like a horse to run faster. It's a very, it's a uni, it, 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 it like is an art, uh, within itself as well. You know, it's not just simply jump on a horse and kick it and push it and slap it as hard as possible. That's not really, sure. you know, sure. that's great. And, um, you've got a, a really long term relationship with, the trainer that we have our horse with, Mark Wolford. Yeah. Um, so I know that you've known him for quite a few years. How did you get introduced to him or how did you meet him? Yeah, I was, again, I came over here to a trainer called John Quinn. Um, and Mark had started there. I was probably attached with John for about uh, eight years. Um, and Mark had come from Mick Shannon, that he'd spent three, four years down there, there with Mick. And he came up to John's to be an assistant. Uh, closer to his uh, uh, with his home place in York, and John trains outside Malton. Um, and John had flat horses, jumpers, the same as what M- M- Mark's what mom and dad had. Um, and Mark was just learning his trade through actually that, and that's where I met Mark. Um, and we've known each other now probably ter- twelve years, I say. Um, so yeah, no, no, we he he can read me and I can read him, which is very good. Um, and I think for both sides of the party, you have to have confidence in your jockey and your trainer. And um, because we started off as friends, you know, there isn't that boss jockey relationship. It's a mutual uh, respect, and I can be very open. I would open to 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 Mark. I, you know, I'm not very worried about what I say. I can say it in whatever way, but he knows how to take that in if I'm having a bad day he might know I might be exaggerating sometimes if, if things don't work out you know so so he can pick up on all that and it's a great thing to have as well that you have more friends than a boss and a, and a, with, with like an employee sure sure and um obviously there's not any racing on in the UK or in Ireland actually at the moment yeah and I wondered how um as a race jockey as a flat jockey how you're staying fit at the moment have you got a regime you're engaging with or is it about riding it out? Are you staying fit? Um, I'm actually quite active. I've always been quite, I, I enjoy, enjoy my uh, running a lot. I've always enjoyed running. Um, and, and as you say, I'm not a, a natural size of a flat jockey, you know, I'm not a, probably a natural weight of a flat jockey, but I'm staying fit through, I wake up in the morning about five o'clock. I'm in the yard by about, 10, 10 past six the first horse i'll sit on is half six i'll ride six to seven horses out in the morning time and get done at half 12 one o'clock and then i'll come home and hopefully when i would come back the kids are having their lunch uh with actually their 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 mom um and then i get on the treadmill or i'll go off for an eight mile run or a six mile run and then I'll come back sh- and change and get the kids in. And the kids will keep me quite fit. So um, <laughs> from there on then, I, I think the biggest thing is, <clears throat> the, uh, uh, the biggest thing is trying to stay away uh, 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 from all the foods that you really want. You know, I do love my food. Um, and the first week, I have to say, I did actually get stuck into actually eating whatever and I shouldn't have. Um, but now we're trying to just back off a little bit and, and pick your two meals a day or, or so on, you know. Sure. And so, Dougie, how much do you weigh? Uh, on a good day. <laughs> on a good day. Um, I say at the present time, I haven't checked it, but when I was jumping, I was naturally, I was quite light for a jump jockey. I was probably anywhere on a good day, I'd be 9'7 to 9'10. Yeah. Um, I'm about 5 foot 10. Um, I've always been a little bit lean. Um, on a bad day jump, I was 9 foot 4. Um, but on the flat, it's a different scenario. Um, it works in a different way. Um, my first year in the flat, I was I was kind of waking up every morning eight thirteen nine stone, and then you go racing, you go for a run, um, you you get in the sauna, you could drop off two three pounds and do your eight stone eleven eight ten. Um, but then what happens when you do that for so long? Your body becomes a sponge, 
and it's a bit of a mind game with, with like your body, your body as well. Uh, well, I've been on the flat now five years, and it gets harder with every year because your body knows what's happening, um, and it's trying to uh, manipulate your body a bit. Um, I like to fl to flood my body with a lot of water, and then I can exercise. So I'd rather instead of not eat nothing and not drink anything, I'd rather eat a bit of white meat, fish, chicken, um, and then. Uh, you know drink your five six liters ten ten liters of water a day would after you wow. yeah would after you've done your racing or or through actually the day um and then just start again the next day now the last it depends on on the time of year it is um you could be taken off and with anywhere from three pounds to eight pounds in a day um so it's it 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 it's quite a mind game and you gotta if if your agent, which we would all jockeys have agents, and if they can tell them sort of like you tell your agent what is a a comfortable number that you'd like to be on your midweek racing, and then you'll say to them, well, if it's a good ride on a Saturday or a big pot, you just need to know four days in advance, um, and then work from there. You know, um, the, the last year the lightest weight I'd done was eight stone ten. Um, this year I've done a couple of eight tens as well. Um, it's not easy, but once you're busy and you're active, um, it's not too bad. It's like this, like the first week we had the, no, with no uh, racing and we shut down. I literally, I said, I think my last ride I'd done an eight stone 11 at Wolverhampton on the Saturday night, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And then I think on the following Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, where racing was abandoned, um, well, well cancelled with this, um, uh, with virus. Um, and literally, I probably done eight stone ten on the Saturday night. Um, by Sunday, by ten o'clock that night, I was probably nine stone four, nine five, and then by the day, I was probably nine six, nine seven, or even nine ten. Um, your body just swells up and holds on to what it um, it, it, it you know whatever you're taking off, it takes it back in again. But if you get it into a rhythm where it'll 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 let it go and it'll, it'll take it off whenever you need it as long as you're, you're getting the right amount of volume of water in and so on so sure. it's quite long-winded <laughs> no, it's really really interesting and um yeah i know lots of our owners and lots of the people involved on the, the different let's get racing sites won't have known that jockeys kind of alter their bodies in this way and uh, so it's really interesting for us and Dougie, i won't keep you any longer but really appreciate your time and you know, fingers crossed racing gets to kick off again soon and we get you on board Rizalot for the for the start of the season. It'd be great to, to have you on board and I know if you can, you'll come along to the open day that we're going to run. So hopefully we'll get to meet you there unless you've got a really exciting ride that you're going to. But um, but hopefully we'll get to see you there. Thanks ever so much for your time, Dougie. All right. All right, Russell. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers.